You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. What's up, you flying frenzies? Welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. <laughs> yes, my name is Rob. Thank you for hanging out with us today. This is episode number 574. Crazy to think that we're that high in these episode numbers, but uh, it's all thanks to you. So keep bringing those questions to us and we'll keep getting them on the air. We really appreciate that and the reviews and the support from our sponsors, which you know who they are. So make sure you check them out, videoblocks.com forward slash drone you if you want access to copyright free music and video and templates also special thank you to charky who is the maker of the all natural and grass fed lamb jerky it's a peruvian style jerky it's an alternative to the chemical packed crap that you can buy at the grocery store (laughs) don't do it nope don't do it go to amazon.com instead and search charky c-h-a-r-k-i and get yours today and wow your taste buds But also, guys, thank you very much for listening. We got a really interesting show today talking about an issue that you may not be aware of. Have you ever found it difficult to fly a straight line in GPS mode? There's a technical reason why it may be almost impossible. So here to ask the question, Rob. Hey, drone you. I am cutting my teeth on a Phantom 3 standard and getting lots of great practice in learning a lot. One thing I'm having a lot of trouble with is a specific cinematic tracking shot, like a slow shot that I want to get. I take my wife out practicing with me, and I'm getting pretty good at front side tracking and blind sides and side longs. But for this shot, I want the drone to be about 70 feet in the air, gimbaled down, and the actor walks in from the bottom of the frame. And when they get to about mid-frame, you throttle forward on the drone and track with them. So now you're tracking with them as they walk and keeping them the same place in the frame. The problem is that even when I try to tune the stick sensitivity with the EXP setting in the uh, DJI Go app, the drone rarely goes forward when I push the stick forward. It'll go forward and then quite a bit left or forward and quite a bit right or just completely left or completely right. It never just goes forward. Uh, So my question is, is this a physics thing? Is it possible to get that kind of a smooth motion from a drone at rest in the air? Well, not at rest, but hanging in the air. Or is this uh, a skill thing? Like, am I just going to get better at this if I practice? Or is this a limitation of the Phantom 3 standard? And maybe the shot is going to be easier to acquire with a Phantom 4 Pro, which is going to be my next purchase. Or is this like an Inspire or a Matrix kind of a shot that you need to get? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe, very much for the question. And um, I guess I'd call it sort of a technical question. Tag of along, side alongs, ling alongs, ring right alongs. Looks like it uh, sounds like a bunch along. of cookies rather than camera motions. I could use a good oatmeal chocolate chip cookie. A tag along. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so first of all, his question Will it be easier with the Phantom 4 Pro over the Phantom 3? The answer, Rob? Yes. Yes, it will. Why? Because of the redundancy features, double IMUs, double compasses, which means better accuracy with GPS. The old Phantom 3, here's the thing. The old Phantom 3, even the Inspire 1, has one compass. And guess what? It only has 10 feet of accuracy, which means if you're in a 10-foot circle, it could move along just anywhere, making straight lines almost impossible. Having double compasses definitely makes this more easy, but if you can become a skilled operator, learn to fight the wind, learn the hover test, and then learn to fly in straight lines, you'll never have to work with GPS to get those straight line movements. So are you saying that if he moved your... I I don't know if he said it or not that he's flying in GPS. We're assuming that you're saying if he would move into attitude mode. I know he's I know he's in GPS because of the way he stated his question. I'm trying okay. to move the stick forward and I don't you know I'm not going anywhere. I'm moving from side to side. Okay. So just one solution is just to fly in attitude mode. If you fly in attitude mode, the first thing I always do is the hover test, which is what I do with people when they come to drone you. The hover test is I throw them an addy right away. Mm-hmm. Um, And then I say, okay, I want you to fight the wind and just stay in one place. And then we pick somewhere further away. 
you have to stay over this place. And I make them use the camera to keep staying in one place. Okay. So they're learning how to adjust for wind speed. They're learning how to adjust their trajectory for speed. Once we do the hover test, then we move in a straight line test and we do it at different directions against the wind. Okay. That way they can learn to maintain their speed, but also learn to fight the wind because your movements, and I teach people this all the time, your movements have to be consistent. They can't mm -hmm. be jerky. Right. You know, you've really got to learn how to slow everything down and react as slowly as possible. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but if you ever learn from a really good helicopter pilot, they make the most minute movements and they may have a fast reaction time, but they don't overreact. Right. Okay. So in this particular case, I'm just trying to understand what's happening. He's literally pushing the sticks forward, but because of the GPS, it's he's the gonna, He's still is, moving forward, but he's swaying from right. side to side because his margin of error on the accuracy is 10 feet. So he could move 10 feet either direction. So the drone is responding to that movement forward, but in its own way, mm -hmm. given the accuracy that isn't there. Correct. Now, if he were to put his phone, his keys, and be 20 feet away from a vehicle and all steel and do another compass calibration, he could get better movement. Okay. Um, that is one benefit of doing a compass calibration on site. Again, if you're around a lot of concrete or steel, like we talk about in the don't crash course, you definitely don't want to fly or do the compass calibration. Excuse Got me. It. So okay. distracted. Sorry. So th to hear the the answer to this, the Aspire One wouldn't necessarily be a lot better because it's only got the one. It would be it would be better because of the design of the bird. It definitely okay. has you know it's a better quality compass, but it's only a singular compass. Right. In the Inspire Two, you've got dual IMUs, dual compasses. Okay. So. But he's definitely going to see a market improvement either through Addy Mode or just moving up to something like the P4 Pro. Correct. Very cool. So you're going to get that shot, Joe. We're convinced you're. You're there. Whether it's practice or a better bird, you're going to get it. Exactly. And I would say practice because you should never rely on technology. Hmm. That's just my personal thing. But you marry the two and now you're really cooking with gas. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Those you cookies. Get, you get that from Uncle Rob? Wait, are you Uncle Rob? No. <laughs> I'm not Uncle On Rob. that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. Gentlemen, thank you for the reviews. If you want the formula to live in the drone life, you are sick and tired of mediocrity and living the nine to five. Get the book, Live in the Drone Life, and then join the Drone community to keep you motivated, inspired, and living your dream. That's going to do it for us. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You.